Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Happy Monday, Glenn. Happy Monday to you, Sarah. Thank you. What's uh, the top story? Top story, uh, socialism, I think, and uh, AOC. All right, still. Yeah, I noticed I didn't get a pleasant uh, nope. you know, greeting. Yeah, yeah you did. Um, I would uh, go with <laughs> a hardcore uh, conservative Republican uh, Howard Schultz. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, big time conservative. Good old conservative mm -hmm. Howard Schultz. Mm -hmm. All right, Jason. It's an absolute horror movie in the most literal sense right now in Venezuela. And what just happened over this weekend, actually Thursday, Friday, either we did something or we didn't, but either way it shows a very, very disturbing future. All right, obviously a lot to get into, but first we want to thank our sponsor, American Financing, Glenn. American Financing is a company that I have trusted for a very, very long time. Uh, right after the 08 crash, um, they called me back and said, hey, we're stable. Now will you voice our commercials? And because I knew, uh, because I knew them before going in, and they, they pointed, they were one of the only banking people that I could talk to that would say, I know trouble is coming, it's right around the corner, and we're not involved in it. And I was like, yeah, well, I'll believe that when I see it. And they weren't. They were totally fine. Um, I think that's happening again What's important here is they weren't just totally fine. All of the people who did loans with them are fine because they didn't build a house of cards. They didn't buy into all of the, the, the nonsense that we were doing in 08. And those times are coming back. You need to refinance your home. You want a new loan for your home. This is the company that I trust. And it is the number at the bottom of the screen. It's there, American Financing, AmericanFinancing.net. Glenn, uh, the Democrats and socialism. So I just, um, you know, Jason and I spoke this weekend about something that Jason found that I was not aware of. Um, and I'm surprised because, Stu, you remember our investigative arm when we were at Fox. I was putting a million dollars a year just in research of my own money uh, when we were at Fox. Wait, so... We can strike up a similar agreement? <laughs> no, that was a whole team. I got you now. Uh, and I found the thing they didn't. I know. So we talked about how socialism came to Hungary top down, bottom up, inside out. We talked about it a lot. Well, there was a precursor to that, and it was Czechoslovakia. And Jason found uh, something that has really been hidden. It was written by the Communist Party historian who said... Here's how we took over Czechoslovakia, and they flipped a country in three years. They took a, an open market uh, kind of country and that was, did not want to go Russian communist, and they flipped it. In three years, they had the people begging for it. Can I add something there? Yeah. And not only did they do that, they couldn't do it violently because that was part of the Yalta Commission, like Stalin couldn't roll through and just overthrow all these countries. So they were like, okay, how do we affect a country legally within their own legal system with, that have constitutions, that have a democratic system, a parliament or whatever? Um, how do we do it within their own system? It sounds impossible, but they figured out how to do it. They figured out how to do it. And if you read that, you look at it. We're at the end game. We're at the end game. And really, we were right the whole time 10 years ago. We were right. And if we don't know the end game, if we can't get good Americans, Rahm Emanuel is at least looking at um, Congresswoman Omar and her anti-Semitism and the anti-Semitism that is happening from the left. At least people like Rahm Emanuel are coming out and saying, hey, this anti-Semitism stuff is kind of scary. We have to have people wake up to they're not talking about the kind of socialism in Sweden, as evidenced by AOC. Watch what she said this weekend at South by Southwest. Capitalism isn't, to me, is, it's an ideology of capital. It puts capital, <laughs> the most important thing that. is the concentration of capital. <laughs> and it means that we seek and prioritize profit and the accumulation of money above all else. And we seek it at any human and environmental cost. That is what that means. And to me, that ideology is not sustainable and cannot be redeemed. Okay. So I want you to hear a couple of things. First of all, she makes every joke about Sarah Palin 
look like Sarah's a genius, okay? This woman is a dim bulb. Uh, now, th let's get past her theory. Capitalism is a theory of capital. capital. Uh, and move on to what she's saying. First of all, we don't have evil meetings where we say at any cost of humans and any cost of the planet. Well, of have not. you considered that we have the meetings and you just weren't invited? Yeah, that's a possibility. <laughs> uh, so th that's just, that is such a cartoon distortion of what capitalism is. That's not what capitalism is, especially in a nation that was founded on the principles of moral sentiments. Not wealth of nations, but moral sentiments. So she has no idea what she's talking about. The important part for every Democrat to hear is what she said after. That is irredeemable and not workable. So she is, whatever they tell you about this Swedish bullcrap, uh, IKEA is not a socialist country, a, a company. It is a capitalist com company in a capitalist free market system. They are talking about getting rid of capitalism. That brings you right directly to the Venezuelan diet program, which I don't want, I should be on, but I am not <laughs> willing to go on. That's so ridiculous that, um, that, that's what, that, that money is the only thing that we you know, basically worship. Uh, capitalist countries are the most charitable countries in the entire world. The United States leads them all. Even if they rank some other countries as being more charitable per capita or whatever, Whatever. We have a lot of people. We give a ton of money of ch to charity. How many socialist countries out there favor charity over, you know, th that compete with the United States or any other capitalist country in charity and giving to the, to the needy? You don't None of them. You, because you don't see it. I lived in the socialist state of New York that still begrudgingly allowed us to do a free market system in the city. But everything was taken care of. You could not do things in that city. You couldn't just go out and empty garbages. You couldn't do things. You, we were not allowed to do things that would help make your community better without going getting some sort of a permit. And you get to a point of paying such high taxes and being told, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it, that eventually you start to complain, why isn't somebody doing something about this? And that's why charity falls apart in socialist countries. Because I'm paying taxes. Somebody's supposed to be helping them. Yeah, it's interesting too. I think I don't think um, the intent of capitalism is necessarily to do everything wonderful for human beings, right? Like the intent of it, it it's just the it's the effect of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it happens automatically, which is what makes it so great. The intent of socialism, I know what the real intent of socialism it's to is. To socialize. That's at CPAC, right? right? To socialize on social networks. To capitalize yeah. or to capital. Uh, it's, it's a theory so. of social networks. Socialism. Um, but you talked about this at CPAC <laughs> and that the, the actual intent, the stated intent of socialism is, you know, is, equality. Is, is, oh, yeah. is, is, is wonderful. But the, but the actual intent is equality. Mm -hmm. And equality sounds wonderful. In, in, inequality for capitalism. For, for, uh, socialism is, is, is equality. In, equality. Inequality and, uh, and fairness, though, is what is capitalism. Merit is mm -hmm. capitalism. Um, so, and it's funny because, like, because capitalism rewards uh, people who achieve things and therefore automatically leads to inequality at some level, the rest of the people are able to benefit from those, those advances. Could I, could I argue and push back a little bit that it's not, doesn't reward people who achieve things? This is the case of moral sentiments. It, it rewards those who figure out what the public wants. Yeah, uh, yes, so I, I, you're right. How this can I make someone's life better? Yeah, there's not easier. I, I think that that's an achievement, but I mean, I, I, th I see what you're saying. There's a yeah. distinction there because sometimes mean, cause you could be a drug dealer, a hardcore porn yeah. uh, purveyor, and, right. and I guess you're giving people what they want. Yeah. I don't know. I don't necessarily say that's an achievement, Correct. but um, that's the but, point of moral sentiments. Yeah, be careful what the society is like. If the society is degraded, it's going to ask for degrading things, and so it will reward the people who will provide all of that, drugs, porn, whatever. And I will say at some level, uh, both the founders and Adam Smith, I think, underestimated the, uh, the, the ability for capitalism to, uh, to overcome 
uh, the lack of moral sentiments, right? Like, I mean, I, th- oh, I would have said, I think if you would have asked all of them, they all said that this is an experiment. We have no idea how long it's going to last. They thought that it would um, be done before they were dead. Yeah, and it really, it's, it's been able to overwhelm and sort of, it's been durable, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's something that has been able to overwhelm people's move away from morals mm-hmm. and move away from really the fundamentals that this country was founded on God. when it comes to ind- God and individual freedom. I mean, we've abandoned a lot of that, and this, this engine continues to churn. It's, it's very difficult to turn off. You have to go to places like North Korea and Cuba to find no evidence of it. Um, so I, I hope that that, that can... That we have some window where this has continued to, to, to go without those things, but it's not infinite. And, you know, we're coming up to that wall. It feels like we're coming up to that brick wall a lot we quicker than, than we'd like to be. It's just uh, amazing to me. I do want to transition to Venezuela, and we'll get to sure. Howard Schultz um, after the break. But it's amazing to me that, you know, capitalism has lifted so many people out of poverty, more than any other socioeconomic mm-hmm. structure, yet AOC comes out and says these things and says things like she said over the weekend um, that if you are living in the United States and you're unemployed, you will die. I mean, that's like <laughs> we know that to be patently false. And to me, it's a slap in the face to, you know, the people living in ben- Venezuela. I mean, that is poverty. That is a, a real situation where you could die. In the United States, we don't find that. Yeah, and I'd also like to point out that the United States, since the early 1970s, has spent over $20 trillion on welfare to ensure that things like that right. don't That's happen. right. We have a system entire, in place for the people who are in need in our country. Our entire debt would be at $2 trillion if it wasn't for the welfare state. Yeah. Absolutely insane. But, um, yeah, Venezuela got a lot worse on Friday. Uh, it's a really interesting... Uh, I, I guess it, it's, a, it's an interesting accusation that President Maduro uh, kind of threw in our direction. What happens was their national power grid completely went down. Um, I was studying this because it just didn't make any sense. I don't know how one facility could go down and it knock out 90% of the power in the entire country. Oh. But that's a socialist country. Uh-huh. Um, they have one facility. Everything's really ran down. Uh, they, they, had, they had like two backups. Do they, but, were they online? Are uh, those power facilities online? Uh, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I'd be surprised if they weren't. But um, but it's it, it's crazy to think. It doesn't even really matter if they weren't. I could explain later, but they could even still do it. But um, anyway, they uh, Maduro in, immediately blamed us. Said it was a cyber attack. We have pulled something like that off before mm-hmm. uh, against Iran, um, not on a power station, but a nuclear facility. Um, but everybody else pretty much was in pretty much unison, saying no, this was because mismanagement. Uh, there was. They said that there was a fire that tricked off some alarms because of like overgrown hedges and stuff. And uh, now, once the grid went down, they all of their engineers left the country because they're all scared or they want to get the heck out of there because socialism. Yeah. Um, but they don't have the right people to restart the reactors, and it's actually kind of interesting. They have there's like multiple different turbines that have to be synchronized together for them to go without not sh- nuclear again. reactors. No, no, no. Yeah. It's it's a it's hydro plant. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they don't have the people to do it. So it is still, the power is still down. And oh, my God. It's still down. I think it's the, the fifth day now. And if, when they try and restart those turbines, they're not doing it right, and it shorts out another facility, and that one blows up. Another yeah. one just blew up last night. So um, what you can imagine is happening is happening there. People are freaking out. It's been over, th- the, the, the magic time is 72 hours, mm-hmm. I believe, when all chaos breaks out. There are armed gangs going neighborhood to neighborhood. When the sunlight goes down, you best get in a bunker there. It is that frightening. It's like a zombie it's already apocalypse. Exactly. It's already yeah. already really was. dangerous when now, lights were on. But now it has graduated to like a walking dead type scenario. That's what it's like. Well, Over good. 80 babies died yeah. in neonatal care in right. one day in well, one hospital. Mm-hmm. We don't know about the rest of the country. Now, if you think about, if let's say this was a cyber attack. Let's say it was. I would be very pissed off at my own government if this was a cyber attack because mm-hmm. the human toll is catastrophic, mm-hmm. complete, so irresponsible if that's what they did. It I don't think they did. I, I don't think the United States would do a cyber attack. If I found out, I'd be pissed too. Mm-hmm. If the United States did this as a cyber attack uh, and, and didn't have a plan, let it go on for five days, that's a problem. Because you'd know somebody, well, somebody at the table had to say, hospitals. Yeah. yeah, hospitals. Um, how is the how is it possible that are these first two segments? One of them is Venezuela's in the complete disaster. The other one is the rise in popularity know, of Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. How are they happening because at the same no time? One will, because no one will take responsibility. The press will not point out Michael Moore. They will not point out uh, uh, Pan Sean Penn. 
They will not point out Danny, Danny Glover, Glover huh? any of these people who went down there and extolled this as the greatest thing ever. How can a country that has more oil than any other country on earth, how can they not? How are they in five days of not being able to, uh, to power a, a, a hydro plant? Why aren't they on oil? Why can't they do anything? They, they got nothing. Generators. They can't get gas to places with generators. Why? Why would that country have a gas shortage? Because the first thing they did was nationalize it. Th this is so unbelievable that these people sat here as we told them. This is wrong. This will collapse. This will end the way they always do. All these Hollywood celebrities came out, and not one damn media company will actually hold them accountable. Not NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN. No one will hold them accountable. But they, they put the blame firmly on Maduro. They say it's not the system, it was Maduro. It was a democratic <laughs> election. Chavez was terrible, too. All right, back in a minute. It doesn't this is matter. It doesn't matter. That's a democratic election. That's what always happens. One guy is in, if he doesn't cause death, somebody else gets in, and he... All right, before we uh, jump back into the conversation, we want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So before we found out about this company, I had no idea, absolutely no idea that home title fraud was like a thing. I had no idea. All. Neither did Stu, neither yeah. did Pat. I think Pat was the one who found it first. We're like, wait, what? How eye-opening. Yeah. So they can, the hack, it's hackers, right? They can... Yeah, no, it's like, guys, in. literally, I was, and when I talked to the FBI guy, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this like Russia? And he's like, no, this is like you pass it off in prison and you go out and you got 40 bucks. You buy a, a fake notary uh, and he brought one in. He's like, I bought this online. It was like, what, 20 bucks? Yeah, 20 bucks. Um, so I'll have it upstairs in case I ever need a fallback career. Yeah. <laughs> he says, so you buy a fake notary. Then you go down to your local uh, title. You, all you have to know is the address and the name on the title. You put that in. You notarize it, you sign it, you pay the, the clerk, you know, $15, $20 filing fee, and the house is yours. Wow. It's crazy. And there's no insurance or anything nobody's, like that. Nobody's even watching it. Yeah. Nobody, no, no bank is insuring you. No bank is watching for this. And all the titles are in one place. I should say 90% of the titles in the United States are in one place. So... The Home Title Lock is this company that, I don't know, somehow or, or another is related to that vault. Mm -hmm. And so they've positioned themselves right in front of that vault. So everything comes through that is changing titles, and they see it. They're the only ones that can do this. So you can go to uh, HomeTitleLock.com right now. Get your $100 search for free. You can search and see if you've been a victim. You will not know it until, like, random people show up at your house, and they're like, hi, we're here because we just bought your house, and you have no idea. Uh, HomeTitleLock.com. Go there now.
Okay, we were not quite done wrapping up the uh, the socialism conversation, Glenn. You yeah, said the, the, the I don't remember what it was now, but the 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 um, the idea that these people are starving to death, Maduro, who was democratically elected. Remember, that's what happens with a democratic socialist. You have an authoritarian. Let's just say it wasn't Chavez. Let's say it was Jesus, and he put it all in, and Jesus somehow or another, dies. He's gone. Well, you're going to have another election. Until he comes back. <laughs> Until he comes back. <laughs> You'll have another election. And if that guy isn't as good of an authoritarian, well, guess what? You're going to have this. This is social democracy. This is exactly what happens. And I tweeted this weekend... Uh, our thoughts and prayers and our food is ready. We already have, Mercury One already has people on the border mm -hmm. ready to go. We've wanted to go for how long? Forever. Forever, Forever we've wanted to go. Um, we're ready. We are ready. And we will bring in airplanes full. The country will. Airplanes full of food. They won't have a problem with food. Who's cleaning it up? We are. We are. It'll be the center of the country. How dare these people in Hollywood talk to us? They, have, they propped this up, they said this was good, and then they just let them die. Oddly, did you get any pushback from media members saying uh, thoughts and prayers aren't enough? No, I didn't. No? Not no. on this one? Uh -uh. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, Stu, I want to move on to Howard Schultz. Yeah, very, very closely tied to this. I mean, you know, the, I'm amazed by the incredible pace of the left moving um, to, towards socialism. And, you know... It, I was thinking about this a little bit this weekend. Howard Schultz was at uh, South by Southwest, and they said he was, uh, you know, he bombed there, which is not true. He actually had a pretty good reception there. NBC actually debunked that one. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because they had, you know, video of the whole yeah. event. Um, but uh, it, what I thought was interesting about it is he, this is, Starbucks was literally the joke as how we would define crazy liberals in this country, right? Like, for a decade, it was, oh, these Starbucks liberals, they're people that are going and they're, I mean, just before he left, they had the situation where the, the, the African-American people were there. They weren't buying anything. They called the police. They got taken out. They changed the entire policy of the stores. They, they didn't back their own employee because someone accused them of racism when there was no sign of racism at all. They closed all the stores for, for racial training. This is this guy, this guy who's been a Democrat his entire life and, and by all measures is a liberal Democrat, not just a conservative or even that Joe Manchin. He's like far to the left. And even he is, he can't even get into the, he's kicked out of the party basically. Do we have time for any of these clips? I don't know how close we yeah, are here. Yeah, I think we have time for one. Let's, let's play one of these clips from South by Southwest. So first off, unequivocally, let me say, there's nothing free in America. So uh, these proposals about Medicare for all and free college and a, a government job for everybody, that is not free. So mm -hmm. someone is going to have to pay for that, and that means that taxes for everyone is going to have to go up, or someone's going to have to wave a magic wand and do something that doesn't exist, but that has to be paid for by somebody. And the difficulty in trying to pay for any of that is we're sitting with $22 trillion of debt that has to be addressed. So it's, it's, it's not realistic. Now, this is just a normal common sense thing, you know, plopped on top of all sorts of liberal values. But that is too controversial now uh, to even be in the Democratic primary. We have one other quick clip, if we yeah, can do it. At the core of our country, which is foundational, is a free enterprise system which is core to our democracy. For us to start moving towards a level of socialism is such an extreme position and something that I think is inconsistent with the values and the heritage and the tradition of the country. And that is what Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and others are proposing, to try and defeat Donald Trump with a far extreme proposal. If Donald Trump runs against one of those types of candidates, it's my belief that Donald Trump will be reelected, that the vast majority of Americans are not going to embrace socialism. This is the first Democrat that I would even consider <clears throat> voting for. I wouldn't. Yeah. But if, if, you know, tell me, tell me, Barack Obama? No. Hillary Clinton? No. 
I haven't thought of a Democrat ever having any kind of <laughs> pro-America understanding in so long. It's like, where have you been? Look at the, look at that difference between Ocasio Cortez and that clip. I mean. You know, Barack Obama used to say occasionally things like what Howard Schultz just said. At least he would acknowledge, right, that that there was a chance that the, the, the capitalist system did some good things. And that's why Joe Biden is 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 being questioned as to whether he's going to be able to be successful. I don't think an Obama Democrat, which is what Schultz is, I don't think an Obama Democrat can succeed in that party right now. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing for Republicans if you want to win elections. Um, but it's a Boy, scary if thing if, if they do win. true. Okay. That's true. We're in deep, 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 deep. Tr- We're over. Yeah. We're over. All right, back in a minute. Because the Democrats, if, if the Democratic Party can't hear the difference, I mean, that, that's a... For those of you who are behind the curve and haven't done this yet, uh, I don't know what you're waiting for, but you really need to go to blazetv.com. We have got so many awesome shows. We've got Steven Crowder. We've got this guy right here, Mr. Glenn Beck. Yeah, I know what you're waiting for. You're asking, waiting for her to ask you nicely like this. Hey, we've got a lot of great things going on. You should join us. I know it's your life has been hectic, but you should join us. Join us at the Blaze TV, like promo code news. Yeah. yeah, do that. That's what they're waiting for. Well, they not don't some, need me to say not it. Not some uppity, I don't know what they're waiting for. <laughs> My God. What? I, I know. I know what it is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Overtime is coming up next. For those of you who don't know where to find it, go to the shows. It should be listed about an, ap- an hour after live. We'll see you there.